Welcome to Santa's MLS Tech Workshops, where we'll be going over ways on how to better your business. In this tutorial, Erin Dickinson from InfoSparks will be going over different ways of how you can use InfoSparks in your business and answering frequently asked questions. Um, I do want to show you some usage examples. So we can use this to create widget, widgets on our website. We can create stats pages or create community pages that have stats information in them. And by choosing that live chart option, again, those will be updated for us automatically. We can get property specific. We can use this to help bolster a listing. Uh, show the stats for that building or that neighborhood. Show how prices are appreciating over time and you know, thereby, thereby how uh, this is a good investment. Uh, you can compare and contrast different segments of the market. Uh, compare how the fee simple versus the least uh, uh, land uh, opportunities exist, uh, or excuse me, how the, the pricing differentials are there and how different of a choice that is in purchasing a uh, single family versus townhouse condo. Uh, compare and contrast different communities, uh, how they are similar or different or different buildings and show how those pricing trends over time. And you can also use this to create a ton of content for Facebook and Twitter and others talk about what's going on in the market, cite some of the statistics, and then talk about some of your own recent experiences in the market. In that way, you're giving uh, your sphere ed an education as to what's going on, and you're reminding them that not only are you knowledgeable about the market, but you're also very active in it. The data we use for these reports comes from the MLS. Part of the reason why we've all gotten that notice to correct a listing at one point or another is because good data in allows us to create good reports. So uh, it's very important that we have high quality data to create these kinds of reports with. InfoSparks is updated every night through the end of the month prior. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that uh, late entries into the system uh, do affect numbers. So for example, we're at month end, everyone's closing out a bunch of files right now, especially with the holiday, it makes things kind of tough. It takes a few days for all that to get back into the MLS and get updated and then we're updating once per night. And so I typically suggest waiting till about the fifth or sixth of the month before you rely too heavily on that data, uh, particularly things like pending and closed sales. Those will be the ones that'll shift the most. And that's just simply because we wanna give them enough time to make sure everyone's closed out everything from the prior month and that that data is reflected in the numbers you're looking at. Your monthly view is the default and that gives you a great perspective as what's going on right here, right now and what's going on with all that seasonality and the volatility and especially this year with COVID-19 and how that kind of changed everyone's plans. Uh, but it's also beneficial to switch over into that rolling 12 month view and look at those underlying trends and see what's going on there. What's that long-term demand look like? Again, how to access this. Uh, first of all, we've got that InfoSparks icon right there in your MLS dashboard. We also have a widget here on the right that gives you a quick access to some of the key stats, things like price, days on market, sales, and months supply. And so you can click through those tabs very quickly. You can also click the more stats link at the very bottom right of that and jump right into InfoSparks from there. And then we also have some integration at the MLS uh, uh, results level here. You can click here for an InfoSparks chart right next to a single listing uh, in that line. And that'll give you stats for that local area around that listing. And you can also click in to InfoSparks from a listing detail page as well. Finally, when you're doing showings with showing time, uh, the confirmation emails you receive will also have a InfoSparks chart in them at the bottom and just shows you the trend of that area versus the region and gives you a quick snapshot there of that data as well. Now, if you're a big data nerd like me, you're probably going to uh, at one point or another compare a showing time uh, stats here to something you might have run right out of matrix yourself. And you may find that those numbers don't match. Uh, that's to be expected. Um, every computer system looks at data slightly differently. So if they're off by one or two sales, uh, you know, or a couple of bucks on price, that's totally expected. Uh, if the numbers are off substantially, it's usually because you're not doing an apples to apples comparison. 
And so here's where that usually comes up. Uh, you ran the reports at a different time or for a different time period. Uh, you're looking at average versus median or the filters that you've applied aren't the same. And so consequently, the numbers won't match. Uh, we also do a tiny bit of data scrubbing. So if a property says it's been on the market for 9,000 days, we're gonna assume that hasn't been on the market for 20 something years. We're going to exclude the days on market calculation. We'll still include the rest of the sales data though in our reports. We are showing only sales activity from the MLS. If you have questions, great thing to do is just to reference that user manual and FAQ at the top of the screen. Uh, that'll walk you through most of the common questions on InfoSparks. Uh, but if you do have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to the MLS for assistance. And of course, you're welcome to share these reports on Facebook, Twitter, and others. We just ask that you keep the citation at the bottom of the report that says where the data came from. Just like in college, it's important to cite your sources. And thank you for coming on this. Uh,